Okay, so quite like the look of this one as well. I think it's quite fun, especially like a beautiful ikat, the long line. I love this like ruching as well, and this little drawstring. So something very simple, uh, a little bit more sort of like long line. Uh, yeah, let's see how we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this illustration. I'm going to just create a new document, 400 by 400. Again, create. I'm going to paste that in, and now we're going to go into Pattern Lab. So let's go to Pattern Lab. Where are you? Here we go. Okay, so I've logged in. Once again, let's go to our profile. So I've already added Francesca's measurements. So let's go to Francesca UK 10. Um, yeah, I've already added her measurements into our profile page, which means I can draft using her measurements to create blocks that accurately fit her or perfectly fit her. Um, yeah, also we have tutorials that show you how to do each measurement. And we also have a general overall tutorial that shows you how to do every single measurement uh, required. So yeah, once we've filled in all of our measurements, we're then going to start drafting our block using the pattern lab, or using the lab. So we're going to go for bodice and we're going to go for torso. Okay, so we want a really big long line block here. As you can see, it's really long. We want to make it a bit longer. So let's just go next. I'm going to go for the fit. And so I'm going to go for no way shaping because essentially it doesn't really have any way shaping. We're going to use this drawstring to create a way shaping. Sorry, I meant there. So yeah, let's go for no way shaping and we're going to go for custom. And let's just go for a bust ease of about 12 centimeters. It's going to be quite large. But it's going to be too large. So the bust ease is just going to change the see the distance between these two points giving us a nice lovely straight block and I'm going to leave the hippies just as nothing at the moment so we have a nice straight block. Next we go for the length and we're going to go for floor length because essentially our illustration isn't floor length but we want to make it slightly shorter but it's certainly longer than knee so we're kind of in between somewhere here we're like kind of ankle length. So let's just go floor uh, and let's go next <clears throat> and then we're going to go for no seam on the front and here we're going to go for what should we go for it doesn't really matter because we're going to be taking it out anyway let's go for straight perfect actually let's go for French nope we're going to go for straight yeah okay <clears throat> so next what we're going to do is we're going to go for the back block no seam and we're going to keep it at mid shoulder and this is so we're slowly kind of getting there let's go for the sleeve now the sleeve is included in this block but we're not really going to be using a standard set in sleeve we're going to be using more of a kimono sleeve so I'm just going to leave this as is we're going to, go to purchase oh the fit hang on uh, okay we had to specify something for the hip so let's just put in I'm not bothered by the hip at all so let's just put in four for now let's click next <coughs> Great stuff. See, as long as the um, the uh, the busties is larger than the, the hippies, then it'll create a nice straight block. Let's go purchase. And then I'll go for the e-pattern. The e-pattern is the digital downloadable um, editable version of your pattern. So we can edit it in Adobe Illustrator. And the PDF pattern is essentially the paper version. So you can print it out on a range of different page formats. So A4, A3, A2, A1, A0, also, or also US letter. But we're going to be uh, amending this in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go for the e-pattern. I'm going to add to cart. Once again, I am an administrator, so I don't actually have to pay for this pattern. So let's just go click I have read the terms and conditions, click confirm. And then once you've had your payment, you can then obviously um, edit and preview your download. And here we have our block looking absolutely fabulous. OK, so let's just click download. I'm going to save this on my desktop. OK, so let's open up uh, the pattern we just created in Pattern Lab. Let's go to, um, where is it, long coat torso block. Let's open that up. And as you can see here, we have Francesca's block. Now, I'm only going to take the front block from this, and I'm going to paste it into our cutting table. And then let's just simply expand. Let's make this three so you can actually see it. Let's also take the bust line, the waistline, make that a little bit larger so we can see it. And let's just simply select the elements we want. Let's get rid of everything else. We don't need it. And let's paste those back in. So it's a nice clean block to work with. Also, um, I know these lines are slightly diagonal here. It's all based on the fact that Francesca has a slightly larger front than back uh, in terms of bus expansion. But I'm just going to simply draw these straight for the purposes of this um, block. It's going to be oversized anyway, it's not going to be beautifully fitted, so essentially we can have those straight lines. Okay, so let's now work on the front, which will eventually become our back as well. So first of all, I want to mark a point. I'm going to mark it just at the side neck point. 
There we go. And then i am already measured this uh, on Francesca, but essentially from side neck point down to the sleeve tip is 60 centimeters. So I'm going to go minus 60, copy. Um, also, I'm going to have, this is going to be about 10 centimeters, this cuff. I quite like the idea of a quite a deep cuff. So we're going to go 10 centimeters to the left. And it's contained within our sleeve. Also, the let's say the depth of the arm or the sleeve is going to be about 25 centimeters so roughly about the arm size uh, plus 2.5 or the bust depth so let's go 25 centimeters copy you can see it's very similar in fact it might be spot on almost spot on yeah with the bust line okay fantastic next what we're going to do is let's have a look in fact we can draw these panels in just very briefly so this is my cuff panel uh, let's make that bold and then this is my sleeve panel which we're going to take to the side seam here no further but now I want to look at the front okay so essentially we have this really lovely deep point and a bit of a chevron um, and we know that this block is floor length because we created it in the lab to be floor length I don't want this to trail on the ground I want this to kind of be a little bit higher up uh, than the ground on the front of the block so let's just make a little point this is the center front and I'm just going to go up by about eight centimeters to begin with okay so eight centimeters I'm going to trace that across and then my chevron is quite deep on this but this is three-dimensional I want to make this about maybe about another minus eight centimeters up I'm just literally eyeballing this but you can also measure this as well I'm just going to draw a chevron between these two points as a guideline there we go okay so now this is essentially my block so let's just now draw in the front of my block here so let's just go point to the side neck point and I'm going to go down pretty much to that chevron point just down the bottom here I'm going to go from this side point up to here so we're now just drawing in that new block now if you can see I really like the idea of this almost like kind of like pulling down and pulling over the front which is why I've gone directly from the side neck point all the way down to the actual center front so we have this almost like this sweeping pulling in let's say triangle and we're going to add a collar to this anyway so um, you know it's going to it's going to cross over eventually somewhere about here which is going to be really interesting okay so I'm just going to make this an outline because we don't really need it anymore essentially we've got our kind of like our pattern or our block so next let's actually make the collar for this uh, this kimono so I'm just going to get let's just simply measure the length of this line of the center well let's say this line here um, 129.3 okay so essentially that means my collar needs to be let's make it six centimeters wide by 123 centimeters long click OK uh, let's just place that here let's rotate it and let's move it out and I got the measurement wrong I think it was 132, not 123. Anyway, either way, that's not a problem. We can just simply pull that line down until it meets. And we can even nudge it in with our keyboard arrows. Okay, I'm then going to draw a guideline down through that line there. I'm just going to extend our, let's say, our band out or our collar out so we have that chevron. So as you can see, look, it's starting to kind of like cross around about, uh, around about here, really. So it's going to be quite interesting. So we've got this beautiful long line, uh, lovely slim kimono. So next for the front, what we need to do is add this. We're adding depth or waist shaping by adding like a little channel that goes all the way around the outside of the garment, stitch the outside of the garment, and also covers the collar. And through this, we're going to thread a rope and essentially just like a drawstring, pull it together, and then you can tie it at the front here, which is quite nice. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a panel let's get my rectangle tool and this is my waistline here so this is where it's going to be located let's go something like I don't know 40 and then we're going to have it about 2.5 centimeters deep so not too thick but quite quite slim and that should be enough for a bit of rope to go through I'm just gonna pull this back just so it matches our collar okay because don't forget this crosses over the main body and also the collar as well and this is the main body and this is our collar I'm going to add some notches to this just so I know where the location is so I don't forget it. So let's just go one, what is it, zero. So there's a notch here, a notch here. There we go. We can also add notches here. You can't see these now, but you will in a minute. And also a notch there. Yeah. And let's also put notches here. Great, okay, so let's move this panel away. In fact, no, let's add, just to be really notchy. 
let's add a notch here, let's rotate it down let's do the same for this side group, ok let's move that off and here you can see we have our notches ok so there's one more thing we need to do so we actually now need to translate or trace off the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole pattern piece that we have here I'm just going to simply transform, reflect, I'm going to use it to create the back and then hit copy let's move this over now one thing, we do not need the collar so that's going to go we can get rid of the notches that are associated with that collar these ones, these ones, these ones. We'll leave the side one, side seam ones because we need those for extend this panel around the back. I'm then going to snip here and I'm going to snip there. We're then going to remove that. And now I'm going to mark a point on the centre back seam here and I'm going to go two down. I'm going to mark two centimetres down from that point and I'm going to draw in my back neck curve which is from this point to this point and let's just curve it. I'm going to go about roughly three quarters the length of that line there. There we go. Okay, let's just join this and this. Join. And let's consolidate that block. Okay, so now we have that lovely straight back center back seam. We can also add these notches to the back if we need to. Although since we don't need to because that's going to be, uh, what do you call it, cut on fold. Also, right, so the front of my um, garment is very slightly higher than the floor. However, I want my back to only be just slightly raised higher than the floor. I want it to slope a little bit more. So let's go up minus two centimeters, hit copy, and let's just pull the bottom of that chevron down. So we've got quite a dramatic chevron on the back. I'm not sure how it's going to look, but I think it should be interesting anyway. So this we have, this is our back block. There we go, and this is our front block. And we're pretty much now ready to start turning this into a finished pattern, and it's looking lovely. Oh, there is one last thing. We need to create, uh, so just here, let's go, yeah, 42.5. Let's just continue that, sorry, continue that channel onto the back, and we can match them up. There we go. Okay, so now let's start actually drafting this pattern, or at least, um, piecing it together so it's actually a finished pattern that we can print and then start constructing. So that's essentially it. So let's start separating these off so they're actually individual panel pieces. So let's first of all, let's grab the back, let's move over here, we'll use that later. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so let's first of all take the collar, just going to move that off. Oh, there is actually uh, one last thing that we need to do before we start finalizing this pattern. So we need to actually, at the moment this collar is only working for the front, I need to actually extend it for the back as well. So I'm just simply going to take this line here, I'm going to measure the distance of it, 7.53, which is great. And then I'm going to basically create another little section here. It's going to be six wide, because that's the width of our collar. And it's going to be, oh, what was it again? It was 7.5. So 6 by 7.5, so 6 width of our collar, and then 7.5 is the length of this line here. Click OK. Then let's move that, because that's essentially the side neck point, side neck point. Rotate, close, and then let's just join those two together. That's fab. Let's add like a little dashed guideline so we know that that essentially comes up from the shoulder seam on both sides. And we can also add a notch. to this bit here. Okay, great. Let's just group that. Okay, so once again, uh, now we're going to start separating these panels up to actually create our kimono, or our little long line, long coat thing. Uh, okay, it's been a long day. Right, so let's take the collar panel, which is this one, which is looking great. We can then also take the cuff panel and the sleeve panel and then we have the body panel. We just need to join these two. Join. OK. And then we have our little... Oh. We're missing some notches here, which is a bit of a shame. We'll get there eventually. It's just because we have a few notches and it gets a little bit complicated. So let's just group group, group, let's move this away, that's better, let's move this away, we can actually get rid of our existing, uh, let's say, patterns here, we don't need them anymore, 
They're kind of in the way. A bit clearer. Let's join this. That's all joined. Let's consolidate. Okay, let's draw some little guidelines between here so we can actually see that those are... That's where our little channel's going to go. Same for this one. Just adding as much information as possible to make it as simple as possible to piece together, although it is quite a simple pattern. Group. OK, so this is our front panel. This is our collar panel. This is our little, um, let's say, piping, or the uh, thing that's going to allow us to gather this garment. I'm just going to grab this. This is the back. And we're going to add this to it as well. Because essentially, this is the side seam. And then this is the side seam. So if I add these two together, we'll have one big long channel that will need to be folded and joined at the center back. Let's just do that. Lovely. This can be our side seam. And we can have notches for that as well. So many notches. Actually. Notch. And then notch. Let's group that. Great. So that's our channel. Let's add the channel detailing to the back of this block as well. Okay, so this is our sleeve and our cuff. Let's just move these out. Let's get rid of the existing points. Don't need them anymore. Right, and because the cuff and the sleeve are the same on both the back and the front, I can actually remove this completely. And I can just double up on this. So if I just do that. And then join them here. Hang on, let's try that again. Just join them. Then we can add in a fold line which indicates the shoulder line. Group, group. So essentially, this is, uh, well actually let's do, let's do it the other way around, so instead of having a seam line here uh, essentially we're just one bit of material is just folding over to the back and we're going to leave this blank here, okay, so these will now just attach and we can define this by using a notch, let's put one well let's put two for the front And we can do the same here. Let's put two. And then for the back. And then for the black, we can just have one. Okay. So we have two for the front, two indicates the front, and one indicates the back. And we can do the same on our cuff. Let's just go one here, one here. OK. Fantastic. So let's just recap. So this is our sleeve, this is our cuff. This is the little waistband gather, this is the collar, this is the main body, and then this is our back, and we can get rid of this and this. And that is essentially our finished pattern, ready for construction. Yeah.
Okay, ah, no, there is one thing we need to do. So this uh, collar here, I always forget to do this. Uh, because this is actually going to be folded over, we need to mirror image this. So let's just go transform, reflect. Uh, let's go copy. There we go. Let's link those. Lovely. Let's put a fold line. We can probably get rid of this information now. There we go. So essentially this folds over and attaches to um, let's say, yeah, this uh, this front panel. Okay, so that's pretty much the pattern. Now what we'll do is just going to add some seam allowance to this. So let's just select all these panel pieces. Let's go object and then go path and then offset path. Let's go 1cm and let's keep it. Let's go preview. Ah, we haven't actually joined these two panels. Join, join. Okay, let's try it again. Let's select all of the outlines of those blocks. So object, path, and then offset path. Sorry, offset path, preview. That's looking great. Okay, and then here, let's make this slightly smaller or thinner. That's one. Great, and now we can start adding labels to um, yeah, to these pattern pieces. However, there is one thing we need to do, which is this back line here. So we want that to be a fold line. So I'm just going to remove the seam allowance from there. We want to be a fold line so we don't actually have a seam down the back. And we just have this one beautiful, consistent piece of fabric. Let's just create, draw in a fold line. There we go. And then what else needs a fold line? This one as well, because it's not going to stop at the back. We need the rope to go all the way through. And this is our little, um, our little tie gather channel. Let's put that in there. There we go. Okay, so let's just add some labels, and then we're pretty much good to go. So let's go back to this block here. Let's grab this. Let's make a little template from it. So we call this long coat or Francesca's long coat. And this is going to be, what is this? This is going to be sleeve panel. And it's going to be cut times one pair. Let's get a bit of branding in there. Okay, let's add in our grey line. Add some arrowheads. Show the direction. Grand. Let's also a little white background. Let's group that and we can then copy and paste it elsewhere as well. So let's put it in here. So this is going to be the cuff panel. You know what? I've made another silly mistake as well. Uh, so the cuff is also going to be um, folded over. So we essentially need two of these. So let me just drag this out. Luckily, it won't take too long. In fact, let me transform and reflect that over. Copy. These little things you do forget sometimes. And let's just merge those. Merge these. Let's draw in a fold line so we know to fold it. Okay, that's great. Let's just move this then over. Okay, this is going to be this is the front of our block. It's a long coat. 
and this was, yeah, cut one pair, cut one pair. This is going to be front body panel. Cut one pair is great. Move this across. This is going to be back body panel. Cut one pair. Nope. It's going to be cut one on fold. And this is going to be fold line center back. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, we have one more, I think. Oh, got the spelling of that. It's not quite right. Back. This is going to be collar panel. And ideally, we really want this to be cut on the bias, actually. Um, but it depends how possible that's actually going to be. So I'm going to put two grain lines on there. We're going to have one, and then we're going to have one like that. Cutting on the bias will just basically allow it to softly roll around, um, let's say, the neckline. But we'll see how it goes. See how much material we get. So that's just a bias grain line in there, so it's diagonal to the main grain line. Okay. Yeah, we're good to go. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, we can add some content to this. So this is simply gather panel. Let's call this Francesca's long coat gather panel. Oops. And then here we can have cut times one on fold. See if we can squeeze that in. There we go. And let's either have it on bias or let's have it standard grain. See what the two different options will do. Okay, and then here we'll have fold line. Okay, great. I think we're pretty much ready to add this to our A4 PDF printouts or PDF print templates so we can print out on A4 paper. I think we're good to go. Okay. Okay, and as you can see here, we've just simply added um, this pattern to our A4 page template so we can then obviously just print this out uh, on a multi on. Okay, as you can see, we've just um, added our pattern to our A4 page template and then remove the pages that we don't actually need. So this should now print out on a series of A4 pages which we can then stick together and then obviously you know create or cut our pattern from and start to create our garment. But yeah, looking good. Okay, I'm just going to print this off and then we're pretty much good to go. Okay, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I hope that was helpful, especially when it comes to explaining how to actually create this beautiful long line kimono beach cover up from our basic blocks using Pattern Lab and Adobe Illustrator. Um, if you want to actually see what this garment looks like, then on this blog post page at the top, you'll find a video blog which basically details the kind of a little bit of an overview of the pattern cutting, um, which we've covered here, also some construction work, and then obviously a review of the actual garment. So, yeah, have a look at that. Um, if you're on YouTube, then just simply click the uh, link in the description to take you to that page. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.